we're extremely pleased to have uh, Chen Wan from Rutgers, who's going to tell us some, uh, some examples of BSD duality. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for the invitation. Happy to be here. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, some examples about this so called radio long length duality, or talk I'll just call it a uh, BS3 duality. And uh, everything I talk about today is a joint work with Mao and uh, Lei Zhang. Okay, so, uh, and so basically, I mean, because of my background, so I'm going to only focus, like, most talk will actually focus on the automorphic side of this kind of duality. And uh, so there will be a lot of pure linear growth and relative trace formula. So uh, basically, the plan is I will first introduce uh, this uh, sort of some uh, sort of unique linear group, or sometimes we call the, also called the degenerate Weidaga models. And because this is crucial both in the conjecture and also in the examples I'm going to present. And then I will uh, introduce uh, their duality and their conjecture and their conjecture for theories. And then uh, after this, then I will basically motivated by their conjecture with uh, three of us, we formulate an analog of the conjecture, kind of like complement to the for certain unipotent the integrals. Okay. For this uh, unipotent integral. And the only is when we combine these two, we can actually get a very natural kind of uh, sequence uh, of like conjectural uh, relative trace formula in parallel. So then we are talking about combining the two, we're talking about some conjectural comparison. And then the examples will be based on here. So in other words, if you can assume, basically roughly speaking, if you can assume these two kinds of conjectures, you should have some sort of general uh, RTF comparison. And then we can provide a lot of examples. And also, there are a lot of many non examples of uh, relative transformer comparison in the past that are forced into this category. Okay, so, and so we start with the unipotent and the integral. So, I'll uh, draw this top here in the number field. And A is the real of Adele. And uh, F is the local field. Okay, and G will uh, G will be a uh, that's it uh, because the, so far the framework only cuts, uh, covers the split group, so we we'll assume uh, G is split. So all the groups involved in this talk are split, connected, reductive, uh, either defined over K or defined over F. So by most time we will be defined over K. Okay, and then I will fix the uh, additive character of the long field. So sometimes it F to the cross. Okay, so these are characters. So uh, what's the unipotent and integral? So, the, so everything will start with the nearpotent orbit. So we start with the O iota, which is the nearpotent orbit of G. And then this obviously induces uh, basically equivalent to giving an SL2 embeds into G. Okay, and once you have this embedding, this will automatically gives you a parabolic subgroup. So which is by given, so then this, you see a parabolic subgroup P equal to M U, where this M is just the centralizer of the torus of the image of iota E T U. Okay, and then you also can see what the unipotent radical is those elements G inside the G, such that you take the limit, T goes to infinity, uh, T goes to zero, iota of uh, I mean, uh, diagonal T is the and G and the Zimus. So basically, the conjugation, the limit equal to one. Okay, so it, it basically, once you have a nearpot orbit, you have this SL2 embedding, the game still the parabolic. Okay, and so then there are uh, two uh, situations. So the first is corresponding to the Bessel case and the free Jacobi case. So if the near potent orbit is even, okay, then this theta basically we get, and together with the additive character, we get a, a character on this U. Oh, you are there. And always the, always the right is the U bracket. What is the given? 
Oh, uh, what is the E one is basically you let this uh, TT was X on G, you have the weight space. It only have the, it does not have weight one space. So it only have to start with weight two. So this is E one. Okay, so this data gives you a generic character. Okay, and then in this case, we can define the period P iota of V, which is just by integrating against this subgroup of your transform, uh, no, uh, any of the form. And the like CU universe, U, uh, phi is some of the morphic form. Okay, so this is this is usually called the Bessel period. Okay, so uh, one easy example would be, let's say, if your gene is your twin, and then you can embed your SL2 as like iota T T inverse as like T I N T inverse I N, and then you can let your iota of uh, one, 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 zero, to be mapped into I n, I n, I n. So you can make this. Then in this case, the probability you get is just this G n, G n block. So in this case, then your M will be just, uh, so your P is just uh, those elements of the form I n, I n, X, and M1, M2. Okay, and then the character is just uh, given by C of I n, I n, X is the precise of trace X. Okay, so this is the unicode that coming out from the Shalega model. Okay, so this is the bandle case. Uh, questions? Okay, so now if you if this is not even, then we will be in the free Jacobi case. Okay, then this will, I mean, I'm not going to define the way he represents it explicitly, but then this Pasai, this IDT character will induce this away representation. But omega Pasai prime of URL on some short space. Okay, so roughly speaking, what this space these basically have of the weight one vector space of this uh, of this SL2 embedding. Because this weight one space together with one element form a Heisenberg group and it helps it. So the roughly is half of the weight one space. Okay, so you do have a weight uh, representation and then you can define the theta series, U psi and V of U. It's just uh, summing over x inside the decay of omega per psi prime u Okay, and then this phi is the short something. So you can, this is the theta series. Okay, and then, so now this one is basically replacing, this is replacing this character. So in the even case, you just have a character. But in the other case, in the not even case, you just have a set of theories on this uh, unit problem. And then you can just define the period. So now this period, the P iota B, but of course it also depends on the choice of uh, the phi, the, this uh, Schwarz function, which you just integrate against your automorphic form with this term. Okay, so this is always called the spray Jacobian Okay, but uh, I think in either in both cases, I will just, of course, here it's not just depends on phi, it also depends on this Schwarz function, but to simplify the notation, I will always just use P iota P to denote this integral, okay? So the choice of Schwarz function, just keep in mind that there is also function. Okay, so these are the two things about the unipotent and the integral. Uh, any questions? So basically, roughly speaking, if I give you a unipotent orbit, you have some sort of period, unipotent period. Okay, and then it's also clear that now, if <clears throat> can, can you give an example for the 
uh, case or not even? Uh, not even. Uh, just think about it, uh, the Fourier Jacob before GDP. For which, for which or? So what for, for like, for, for like, for, for example, UN times UN plus. Yeah, what is G and U in this call? Oh, what is this? I guess, yes. How do you get? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, good question. So let, let me find the one example. So, I mean, the easy uh, the example, I mean, I just said, you know, like, if your G is SP4, you can let your iota, uh, O iota be the minimal orbit. So, which means is the basic principle is some. Um, uh, uh, SL2. Okay, so in this case, then what is the embedding? Your embedding is you map T T minus into uh, the I2. Uh, T1, 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 Oh, yeah, T1, 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 so now in this case you can see that now among the roots. So these are the weight one. So these two roots are the weight one uh, roots. And then these roots is the weight two roots. Okay, so this weight one root and these two, this form a Heidelberg group. And then you have a then your, your theta theory is basically acts on half of it. Your, your z will be half of it because it must be a maximized tropic space. And then this brings us your difference. Okay, so, okay. So, and also, another very important thing is that the g iota, if we let g iota to be the centralizer in g of this image of iota, then this theory, this p iota p, uh, it's uh, a function, which basically means that invariant by g iota k is on. So either g iota, so in the Bessel case, it's always on g iota, but in the Fourier Jacobi case, it may be on some tower case. Okay, well, well, whatever this tower is. But the very important notation we are going to introduce, a uh, normally free, we'll make sure it always stays on the group. Not on the so it means the way representing not genuine, I guess. Okay, so this is the first part. So we have the uniform and the uh, integral. So this will uh, play a role. Okay, so then we move to the second part, which is the uh, the BSV conjecture for pure rate. But to do this, we first de de not, uh, define what is the BSV for triple. So this basically. Uh, Kind of like combine. Yes. So some people write B Z S E. Yeah. So which one? Which one? Yeah, we should ask for David. Which one you prefer? <laughs> I, I like B Z S E, but I yeah, like B Z S E. Okay, so you can write the paper so you get it. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> we have to like a uniform. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the name like the B Z S E. Okay, now we have to write it. Actually, that's another that's contribution I want to make. Okay. Okay. So this kind of a quadruple is kind of a kind of like a, is a basically generalized a lot of previous like period notion just for spherical right? So what does the quadruple looks like? So a quadruple has should have four data. So G, H, U, H, iota. So I'm going to start one by one. So G is the easiest. So G is the split reductive group. Uh, connected. I mean, okay, and the H contained in G is also a connected split reductive group. Okay, and then a uh, real H is a symplectic representation of H to some S to B. Okay, a symplectic representation. And the last to be IOTA is the SL2 embedding. So in other words, near photon Okay, so these are the data, of course. Then there must be conditions. So it has actually three conditions, but uh, for this talk, I mean, I would talk about these three, but for this talk, we only need to keep in mind the two conditions, the first two. <laughs> Okay, 
So the first condition is that H needs to be like in the center of the idol. This image of iota in G. Okay? So now, once we have this, then in particular, we get a map from H times SL2 to G. Right? So this will get it for free. And then this is the second. So it's looking like this kind of like the other parameter. So this SL2 is the other SL2. Okay, now the second is once you have this map, you can let your H times SL2 act on the real graph. And this can be decomposed. Well, in terms in terms of the weight. So it can be decomposed as the summation k inside i of rho k tends to a symmetric k power. Okay, so it has this decomposition. And uh, because the original uh, edge on the uh, represents of orthogonal type, so then in other words, whenever uh, this k is uh, odd, this must be symplectic. So rho k must be symplectic. So then we can we pick up this rho h iota. This is defined to be rho h plus all the odd one. This one, this is the symplectic representation. So this must be anomaly free. So I'll explain what this is. Rho h doesn't No, not necessarily for even in the Gangos Prasad case, you don't pick the four one. Because in the Gangos Prasad, the four one should be SO times SO, like SON times SO. But you only take a diagonal. So you don't have to take it four. You can take whatever you want. So. OK, so what is this anomaly free? So this is actually, so I'm just giving, so in terms of symbolic representation. So still you uh, condition. Oh, no, no, this will be last condition. I want to talk, tell you all the conditions. Yeah. Your, your age you need to satisfy the alpha. Yeah, it'll be bigger enough. Not necessarily the alpha, but yes. So now, the, how to define the anomaly three? So basically, like, if I have a symbolic representation, and then because, so I can, I can restrict it to the maximum torus. Maximum three torus. Now everything is split. Okay, so now if I remove here. So I can when I restrict to rho, when I restrict this representation to T because it's symplectic, so I can decompose it as some representation, say uh, sigma plus sigma check. So I can always take half of the weight. I don't need to take all because because it's symplectic, so it might, you can de decompose the set of weight into two of them. One is a positive one, one is a negative one, if you may. Okay, so then anomaly free means that so. If there exists a character a type of G and a character A of T, such that you now you have half of the weight, you take them, you take the determinant is a square. So it's equal to eta square and the sum. Well, time is equal to. So in other words, the, the sum of half of the weight is almost the square up to something which is y invariant. Okay, and the, the funny thing is, I think about this time last year, when I was visiting uh, Akshay. So in my other work with Lay, we're trying to formulate a general like E epsilon dichotomy conjecture for all the strongly tempered uh, spherical varieties. And in there, we actually find out that uh, this symbolic representation also need to think satisfy the exact same condition in order for us to formulate uh, how, how the multiplicity, like what, what's the di distinguished element in the L packet. So in other words, this condition is like, of course, here, like at this moment, it was mainly used to make sure that when we take the period, you will really get a function on the group, not the recovery group. Okay, but this is the second condition, which is the the associated symbolic representation need to be anomaly free. Okay, uh, questions, other questions? Okay, and then the third, third condition is the one, I'm, uh, because it's not needed in my paper, so, uh, in, in this talk, so the third condition is associated to this data, so a busy way can associate it to a homotonous space, 
and then it needs to be hyperspherical. So this is basically you want H or those things to be large enough. So it's a Hamiltonian space. Associated to delta with the hyperspheric. <clears throat> okay, so this is basically uh, the condition, but we, we, we don't use condition three much often in this talk, so I'm not going to. Okay, so now these are the uh, conditions. So now we, can, we, we need to define the period. But the period is already there, you can see that. Because, so now what are the periods? So the period is, so now uh, I just need to define one more piece for this quadrant. So we have this uh, symplectic representation, so rho h is the symplectic representation of h. Uh, by the way, in this talk, I think the center is trivial for h. Otherwise, we need to caution out of the center. Okay, then this induces a wave representation. We have the sign of H actually should be some A H T other, probably some T so. on the Schwab space. Well, why the maximum isotropic space of the simplex so one is the maximum isotropic space of we? And then we can also define another theta series to be the same way, so x inside y k. Okay, so, and then the period integral we can define associated to this data delta. <laughs> Is really you integrate of h of you first you first do your uh, unipotent integral, which give because h belongs to the centralizer, so you do get uh, some say automorphic of h, and then you integrate against the theta component. Okay, so this is the priority. If you take this kind of period and. Uh, also, this theta kernel is mainly lines in some covering group. But because of this anomaly free condition, you multiply them together, it's kind of like you multiply two general represent together, you get some function really on the group. So this is how the period looks like. And again, I want to remind you, so this, although I only write three here, but there are two possible choice of Schwarz function here. One is here on the theta series, the other is here if you are taking a free Jacobi equation. Okay, but uh, we are going to ignore this anyway. So, okay, so this is basically now I define the uh, quadruple. You have a, a bigger reductive group, smaller one, a symbolic representation, a near potent orbit. And it satisfies uh, these three conditions, but just keep in mind this too. And uh, then we have this period. Can you repeat again? What does the anomaly uh, uh, free condition give you? Uh, the anomaly free condition makes sure that these two together. Multiply together is really a function of h, not some covering of h. Okay, uh, other questions? Even yes. Your 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 first uh, factor already. Say it again. Um, what is the first factor? P lower. Yeah, I So this is a unipotent mm -hmm. integral. So this gives you a function of presumably some h tilde because it's a freedom. And uh, here it also gives you some function presumably on some h tilde. Well, why is the first one not a function? In the only, only in the odd case. If you have the... In the odd case, you will have h tilde. Uh, in the even case, you never have Maybe I, I guess I've got a definition of the first one. Oh, this is the one you said earlier. Yes, yes. Like, like for example, in that example, I show you st4 case. You have this T1, 1, T minus. In this case, the stabilizer is basically this SL2. But the, and the function is not on SL2, it's on SL2 tilde. But the, you, want to, you want to integrate on SL2. So, it's, so then you compose it with oh, another. So you're really doing two things. Really, first, you take that some twisted 
Yes. Uh, you import the integral. Yes. Then, but there you also have a variable. Yeah, yes. So, so this is why I added them together. You can see here. This condition is uh, this one is coming from the unipotent ones. This one is coming from the the here. Oh, so you can say you have you need to add them together to get a normally free one. Oh, uh -huh. yes. So either of this may not be defined on H, but their product is. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, basically I have a quadruple, I get a theory. So now what are the duality here? Well, the duality, of course, I need to start with. Uh, uh, so now I start with one e h rho So the duality uh, proposed by Benzeu, Sakharidis, and Wendish is uh, now for each of this quadruple, you can have a dual quadruple. It's the same component, but so the first thing, of course, needs to be g hat. Okay, it must be the line of dual group of this. And then the rest are some other data. So I'm going to add a coin everywhere. Okay, so this is they basically define kind of a duality between this uh, quadruple. Although I, I think, as far as I understand, at, at this moment, the duality is only, I mean, there is an algorithm for computing the way row H is trivial, right? In the non polarizing case. So I get all this. But in general, there should be kind of duality like this. Okay, and, uh, and then, so what happened? Of course, I mean, you can, it's a set, you can define any duality you want. The question is, what kind of condition needs to be satisfied? So, which that will be the global conjecture for this period. So, uh, I'm going to state the conjecture, but first, uh, to do this, I just need one more thing to, to remind you that uh, first, about this kind of decomposition. So, keep in mind, whenever you have this quadruple, you can define your G as a sum K inside I of rho K tends to symmetric K power. And uh, similarly, on the dual side, you can have your G hat as the sum of uh, K inside I hat of rho K hat tends to symmetric K power. Okay, so in other words, this thing is some representation of H. This thing is some representation of H hat prime. Okay, so this are the so now we can state the conjecture. <clears throat> so roughly speaking about the conjecture is basically, it's kind of like the period P delta is determined by delta hat, while the period to delta hat is determined by delta. Before actually that, do those three conditions, um, so are they preserved under the duality? Oh, yes, I mean, the, 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 the duality on this pair is for this. Pair. I see, so along yeah. the three will give you a long way. Yes, pair. yes. Okay, so, uh, and also, I, I probably should also mention, so there is some other, there are some extreme case about this uh, three conditions. So the first extreme case is, uh, I should say, uh, every much here. Like, if you only consider the triple, the People like GH and rho is trivial, iota is just one. Then in this case, this condition is if and only if it, uh, uh, is equivalent to say that this is actually a sprinkle pair. Okay, in this case, then this this have a sprinkle condition is if and only if H and only G is sprinkle in the universe. Okay, and then there is another extreme case, which I also like, is when, if you only consider the case G, like your H equal to G, and then you have some rule. And uh, here is, uh, I mean, I thought it might be trivial. Then in this extreme case, this hyper-sprinkle is if and only if that this rule is basically anomaly free, and also a uh, multiplicity free. So basically, uh, Kernop has a paper which has a list of all the multiplicity free uh, symbolic representation. And also plus one condition, which is the generic stabilizer of this symbolic representation is connected. So this one, internal spherical, right, is this corresponding to type and roots condition. Can you, can you give a list? Tell me what happens with the minimal. 
Well, what's minimum? If iota is minimal? Yes. Can you tell us what the correspondence is? Uh, is there something special to say in that case? I don't so, think so. I, I'm, I'm not it's sure. It's a natural but, question. Yeah, yes, yes, it is natural, but I'm actually not sure. So okay. Yes, yes. Okay, but, I mean, this is a truly extreme case I know about this. So and one, uh, this one means identity map. I, I, I have to be mapped to one. True, true, true. Yeah, so the next question would be for comment. You say, you say the identity? Yeah, I was yeah, really right. saying, I have a little identity, yes. So, yes. so yes. in the first case, it's just the H period. Yes, it just, then it is just H period. Second, it's a pairing with the... The theta, the yes, is a copy of the theta. Okay, I'm okay. just confused. So which group is supposed to have trivial center, you said before? Uh, say it again. H, H is supposed to have trivial center, you said before? Uh, yes, let's say G and H are the center, trivial center. Otherwise, I, I probably need... Then a dual, the dual terms, but I guess... I think yeah, maybe I just need a G to be a trivial center, actually. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, you can have a center, but the quotient is out. Everything is connected. Okay, and actually now for all these cases, because there is a list here about not list, actually now for all this, we can actually write down what is the dual for this kind of thing. This is the only Okay, so now with this, we can, I can state the conjecture. So the conjecture has basically now I have this, let's say this are in the dual pair. Okay, so now uh, the conjecture has a two part. Uh, let me see what's the most efficient way to write it. So maybe I can write it in two different colors so that I don't need to repeat a lot of sentence. So I start with the pi training a discrete theory of GRL and the mu be a dividing of it. Okay, and uh, I'm going to use a uh, red color to write the dual set because everything is actually in dual. Okay, so now this will be discrete theory. So G has Adele, and the new is the same thing. Okay, and then now the question what we, we care about is when we have this theory, the P delta to be non vanishing, and we also care if it's non vanishing, what is equal to. Okay, so then uh, P delta V uh, is non vanishing. So, of course, the analog here will be P delta cat V. So, it is non vanishing for some V inside of the image. Uh, only if The other packet, the other parameter of pi factors through. So this iota hat, right? From H hat C, SL2 C, to G hat C. And of course, if you on G hat side, then it becomes iota hat. So just iota from HC times SL2C. Yes. Okay, so in, basically in terms of boundary, you have this dual. So each side you have SSL2. Now in this case, your H times SL2 map into G, this uh, SL, this parameter, this boundary determines when this period is non zero. And in here, you have uh, SL2. This now I can determine when this one. OK, and then uh, if this is the case, so now if this is the case, then of course, then your pi actually coming from, I mean, assume power, right? You're coming from some, uh, then pi is the lifting of Let's say uh, uh automorphic function, automorphic representation. Let's say capital pi of now in this side is the h prime of Adele. Okay, now in the dual side is basically h. Okay, so this duality actually basically always 
works well for both sides. Okay, then in this case, the question is what are the theory equal to? So this so-called Ichino Ikeda type formula. So then in this case, this P delta P uh, square quotient of the L2 norm is equal to the code mark, which is up to some ramified place and some theta values. So it's L1 hand. So remember, so this one is the central value. Yes, should be it had to be on the blue or say it again. In, in, in the last. Problem. Yes, so you, yeah, because of the lump, the, so in the last yeah. problem. The yeah, here, here. Yeah. Oh, because of the parameter is on H prime hat. So the automotive bond is on H prime, right? Like this is the dual group. So your star is okay. from here. If we the parameter of this form, then you do back. So I mean the the blue pi starts on G, right? Yeah, it starts on G. You have a cut on uh, sorry, you have a, a automorphic representation on G. It's a parameter in oh, yes, so it's not trying to... Okay. Okay, so now this is L1 half pi. So now capital pi, but I have a central value which is this row. So this row H half prime. Your lifting it may not be the Lalan's chance. Yeah, there's a related to acid package. I'm not an expert in this kind of thing here. Yeah. Maybe some acid. It's a acid lift. Well, it's just the... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. You can call it. Yeah. Now, the, remember, I don't. I not only have this value, so this, you think about it, is the central value, but I also have this kind of decomposition. This should give me all the L values outside the one. Okay, so it's the product of K inside I, Hat, right? Of L K over two plus one. And the part no K. And then the denominator is the usual adjoint. Adjoint. Well, so you may wonder why there's a square here, because in this decomposition. You look at the same zero one, there is always the adjoint itself inside it. So I'm always, I did not take it out from the numerator, so I add it back on the denominator. Okay, so, and then analogically, similarly, the, the other side is basically uh, P delta hat V. Well, or V. Is equal to L1 hat I rho H. So it's, a, it's really completely analog. Okay, so the, so the beauty about this duality is really you have a kind of a two quadruples dual to each other. Then the period of one quadruple is purely determined on the data on the dual set. It should be equal. And then the period on the dual one also determines the one on the other. So this is really the beauty of this relative line duality. I mean, in the past, I guess, already like, I mean, we have the, like we know the dual group of spherical variety. We know that it characterizes a period, but we don't know, we, we don't have like, in, in the past we always have like, we know this part determines this part, not vice versa. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so this is the conjecture, and uh, I just want to give like two kind of examples of this kind of duality. I think one, a lot of you actually already heard it. Where we talk one is basically we know the famous the GGP pair is dual to theta correspondence. So in other words, one is the delta is SO. Let me just write two n times one times SO two n and SO two n. And the row H is zero, and iota equal to one. Okay, and then the dual side is basically SO two n times SP two n, SO two n times SP two n. 
So I, I realize it's still equal to one. Rho is the tensor product. And iota equal to one. Okay, so this one, I mean, you can put it in this category, you can see this. Okay, and then the second one, I mean, I may not have time to explain why this is true, but I, if I have time, I will explain at the end. The second one is if we let delta, this is the one I find originally very entertaining. So if you let it to be F low 2n plus 1 times SP2n, okay, and uh, this is your G, and your H is also this one. And now you let your row H to be their tensor product. Well, this is not enough. This is not anomaly free. But plus one copy of standard of SP2N and IOTA is one. So if you let this be the data, I mean, I, I can explain at the end why this is. Then this is self dual Okay, so uh, this is actually quite a fun example. Well, actually, you, you do have this, so I think they call polarized, you do have this central value on both sides, but on both sides of the duality. Okay, I, was, I mean, just think, I mean, you think about yourself, this is actually combination, is more or less this one, is combined theta and uh, the GGP value. Okay, but so this is the conjecture. So roughly speaking, I just want to say that, so what is the P, since we get from this conjecture, is, you have a quadruple, so it's supposed to give you a decomposition of the Lie algebra in terms of weight space. And then your period, so this almost determines your period. You can see this part, it almost determines your period, except the value at one half. So the value at one half is always very mysterious. Okay, so this is the, the conjecture here. Uh, questions? <laughs> okay, so now, uh, now I'm going to, so this is the conjecture, now I'm going to talk about uh, we're, we're motivated by this one. We form a conjecture of ourselves about uh, not this period, but about the unipotent period, just P iota. And then from our conjecture and their conjecture, you can see if you combine them, you get a very nice formula and which well motivated, naively motivated a uh, relative trace formula comparison, a conjecture. Okay, so the, now is. Can you say what is the. And the, what does it look like? Example, example. Oh, oh, about the, like yeah. The second one. Oh, the, 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 you you have a you have cast bond here. Yeah. And you integrate on the group itself, right, right, right. but against the, the theta series. This this is the, the theta. theta series on H. Uh, oh, oh, I mean, yeah. In this case, G equal to H. So you have two. two oh two yeah, you combine them together. Yeah. Just view it the one. Reducible. So you have two. two yeah, the reducible. Three product. Yeah, in the same issue because if you look at the one, it's only a genuine theta. Yeah, actually, you integrate get a two theta. Okay. Or another way, actually, the correct way to view this this is the theta for S of two m plus two times S p two. This is the correct way to view. You should view it in this way, then you combine with the GGP. Actually, oh, so you look at the yeah, data. Yeah. You can very easily find why this is there. You, you pull that restriction to yes, one of Yes, yes. So it's a theta kernel on this product. Yes. OK, so now I'm going to talk about our conjecture for P iota. OK, so now in this case, so to talk about this conjecture, we start with the dual side. So I think I can do it with without the erased formula. So yes. <laughs> so we started with the neopotent orbit on the dual side. So G is still split. So, so on the neopotent orbit on G hat, it can be any orbit, okay? And then we can this case we have the barbet Morgan dual, which bring out to a neopotent orbit on the group on G. Okay, and this one is always special. Okay, and so this is special. And then from here, we already know we have a theory. We have defined this uh, unipotent theory. Okay, so this is a conjecture we, we want to focus on this theory. Okay, and you will find it works in the same spirit as this. So then what should we start? Well, on the other hand, from this near orbit, I know that I have a map from 
SL2 to G hat. And I can let H hat iota hat be the centralizer. <clears throat> Okay, so then in particular, I get a uh, iota hat, which is uh, h hat times SL2 to g hat. And then in the spirit of this, I can, once I have this map, I can act on the algebra. So then this real algebra, g hat, can be decomposed as uh, i hat of low k hat and the same k. Okay, so I can still have this decomposition. And then now the thing is that now the next step. So I just need one more definition I can state. Yeah, I still have one more here. So now the next step actually took us a while to figure it out because originally our conjecture here is only for the even case. But now I think we can also move to general case. And then, Yes. So then the conjecture is uh, as a uh, looking for. So now I take all the, all the ones. Okay, and uh, we know that the summation is symplectic representation and is not irreducible in general. So now I can decompose it as uh, something that appear in couple in in pairs and something. So well, sigma i are disjoint, distinct, symplectic, uh, irreducible, which forces it to be symplectic. Okay, so this means what? This means you take you take the decomposition, you look at which symplectic representation appear all the times, and then you use those. Okay, if it appear even times, let it go. Okay, so, and then, so this gives me a row hat, which is the sum i, sigma i. Okay, so I only, so in, I have this kind of filtration. I take all the representation appear in the, all the weight space, but I only, I sum them up, but I only, then I take a, a sub representative of it, which are exact, those invisible components appears all the times. Okay, so now I can, we can, I can state, or theorem. So the setup is the, the same as the other one. We take a pi, which is a discrete series. Yeah, there and the new is the embedding. And now in this case, we just assume our other parameter factors through this iota hat. So assume uh, the other parameter. Pi, the rule. Uh, this I don't have. Okay, so in other words, it will be a lifting of some pi uh, inside of the automorphic space of H I don't have. Okay, so pi will be some lifting here. Okay, then we can state our conjecture about this near potent, uh, about this unipotent integral. So the conjecture. Okay. Which is the well the same thing is well the L2 norm should be equal to then we suppose. So now the denominator is not hard to get inside I hat of L k over two plus one pi rho k. Now the numerator is this representation. So keep in mind, if the pure, if the near polar orbit is even, you don't even see this. Okay, so then L1 have. Okay, and then what example do we have for this uh, kind of thing? So the example is basically, uh, the example do we have, where actually later I'm going to say more examples, but. The very the first example you had here is if you start with if your iota hat, so if all iota hat is zero, this means all iota is regular. 
Then in this case, it's just Vedaga theory. So then this is basically the La Lapide mouse conjecture for Vedaga. Okay, because in this case, you don't get anything on the numerator. Now on the denominator, you only have the weight zero space, which is adjoint the space. So this is the Lapide mouse conjecture. Okay, and then we have some other cases which, I mean, uh, people, uh, we have some other examples which at least we can, someone, uh, we can, when, you compute, when computer the unratified part, we can realize this is really the L function appears. So the particular examples are those appears in the double ring method. So if you let, like your G equal to GL2N, SO2N, SP four n, and then you let your q hat be the zero parabola uh, in the pure g hat, and then you let your o iota hat be the principal. <laughs> principal means the maximum one. Principal in uh, this l hat, and then in this case, uh, this. Uh, the, the L parameter is the exact same one appeared in the unrated computation of uh, Lapid and Rallis. Okay, so this match. Yeah, uh, computation of Lapid and Rallis. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, so keep in mind, so it actually took us a while, as a while for us to formulate this conjecture in the uh, non-even case. So the key is like to find out what put, to put on, on the numerator. So at the moment, we do have examples where, like this things, like we have some, we have some examples where uh, this, you take the sum, summation, it just say one uh, simple representation, irreducible one, so you put it in the numerator. But we also have examples where you take this summation, you actually get a two symbolic of the same one. Like for example, we have an example like where in this case the centralizer is SL2, we get a two copy of the standard one. So and in this case, we don't put anything on here. Okay, so so it turned out and eventually did us to formulate the conjecture like this form. Okay, so I mean this is only some of for example, I think already in this case, in this SP4N case. You can already, the orbit is not uh, even. You can already see something in the numerator. Okay. Okay, so now we are getting to the end. So now, what's next? So now, if you comp compare these two conjectures, you can see a lot of funny things. So now we can comp compare the formula, the formula here and the one here. What do we see? Well, first, the denominator seems to be canceled out. Right? It's a, I mean, so this denominator cancel out with this, right? Now, if I put one more assumption, if I assume there is no, this are just zero. In other words, if I assume my period does not relate to central value, and uh, my important orbit say is somehow nice enough, for example, even, then what do I get? Then I just get L adjunct, right? And that's the one, that's the way that I'm model. So now, and of course, we can also deal with some cases. We also have some, for example, for rank one case, we can deal with all the rank one in this spirit. But let me just mention one case. Actually, is it one, uh, one general case? Now, this is the conjectural uh, here comparison. So now I. I start with this Q, so this quadruples. Okay, so I start with this quadruple. And I make two assumptions. The first assumption is that I assume this row H hat prime is zero. In particular, in comparing here, there's no numerator here. Okay, and then the second condition is there's no such no there's no is the row uh has at iota prime is also zero. In particular, nothing here. 
Okay, let's just consider this case first. Okay, no, I sorry, just this or something. Okay, then in this case, what does we get? So from BZSB, what we get is this period delta B square. I mean, we assume the answer parameter back through the correct sense over B V will be equal to product K D inside I, so L K over two plus one pi rho K. Okay, and then L one pi adjoint square. Okay, and then from our conjecture, so from our conjecture, we know that from our conjecture, we know that if I take the period associated to this, the dual of this, the iota prime of phi. What do I get? Is exactly the, the numerator become in the denominator. So one over product over k, L k over two plus one pi rho k times. Okay, so we just make this assumption. So you think about this assumption, it roughly means the period does not relate to central value. So it's roughly like this. Okay, so now then you as you multiply them together, what do you get? So now when you multiply them together, you get should be delta B, B iota prime B over B. Seems to be should equal to L1 by adjoint. Okay? But then we know what is equal to, I'm almost done. So what is equal to L1 by adjoint square is the Wittaka period. So as a result, we should get, we should expect the there should be a comparison of the red of the following two relative trace formulas. It's, it's square. Yeah, it squares off of everything. Yeah, yeah. but so then there's no square on the bottom. No, there's no square. You, you, you have a square. Point, there's two squares on the on the right side, on the right hand side. Ah, sorry. Uh, what about the right hand side of the top? Yes. L1 by the joint. Yeah, maybe remove the square. This no. this square is removed because you remove the square of your right? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Right. Yes, thank you. Yes, there's no yes. Okay, so now I have two RTFs. So the first RTF I take a Schwarz function on G, so one RTF F is on G, and I have the usual kernel function. And then this RTF is I take the I basically take these two periods on two variables. So I can take my I have to be my period about delta on the first variable and my unipotent period on the second variable of this kernel function. Or oh, this one and two really means which variable. Okay, so this is one uh, of the trace formula. So the other one is just a good need relative trace formula for H prime. So the prime is that H prime of L. And then I just let JF be the goodness one. So integral over M prime. M prime is the maximum unipotent of KF prime, X and Y, and the C, X minus Y. Okay, so this, this one is just the the goodness of H prime. But now, because of this kind of identity, we should expect that there should be a comparison between this. So in other words, when well, your periods are not related to some central values, you should always should you combine this period with some sort of unipotent integrals. This should always be compared with the period of the Kuznets of I mean the dual group. Okay, so then the conjecture should be. <clears throat> So the conjecture is maybe as though there should be a comparison. Okay, and actually we have a similar kind of comparison also for rank one spherical varieties. 
in which it is either compared with the uh, the needs of SL2 or PGL2, or it can be compared with the, the hack period on PGL2. Okay, that is all those. Okay, so now what evidence do we have? Well, this actually explains several of so the last uh, was three minutes. I uh, just talk about what are the examples. So the first example of this type is for Shalaga model of at this at this moment it's known for GL4 due to Friedberg decade and also Mao has a other way to prove fundamental lemma. So the first example is when G H Rho H iota is a so-called Shalaga model. So well what does this mean? So this means that G GL2N H is GLN, diagonal embed, real H is trivial, and IOTA is the embedding I just described at the beginning, so T, T, minus, map to T, I, N, minus, I, N, and then uh, one, 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 so I, N, I, N, I, N. So this is the Shalaga model, and what is this dual? So in this case, the dual side is G hat is SL2N. I don't know, better to start with PGL anyway. Okay, now H hat prime is SP2N. And the row H hat prime is zero. I don't know how to prime is zero. So now you can see that in this case, my assumption do satisfies. There's no central value, and in this case, this near bottom orbit is just trivial. So then you should compare what? Then what will this RTF looks like? So now in this case, because the iota hat is trivial, so iota prime hat, so iota prime is the regular one. So you should compare one side you take a Shalaga period, the other side you take a Wilaga period, both on GL2N, and you compare with the Kuznets of SP2N. So this is exactly a framework jacket. Okay, and then the second result is actually our result. So for the second result, we consider the following thing. So we consider the the following table. So on our table, we have our G equal to H. And we have a row H. Okay, and uh, IOTA is always trivial, so I'm, de I'm, I'm defining what the quadruple is. So the quadruple is I can do SL6 with Q. Okay, I can do spin 12. And uh, I do have spin 12. The representation here. And I can do speed 11. These are the group and the, the representation is speed 11. And I can also do E7, uh, simply connected form. And I take the standard representation of E7, the 56 dimensional one. And there are two more cases, which is about the some parabolic decomposition of this. It's not very important. Okay, so let's just do this case. So now in this case, what I do, so in this case, what's the main thing? So G hat, we know what is this corresponding one. But what's the main thing is that, the, and also why we can actually delete is, in this case, this H hat prime is very small. It's PGL2. Okay, and uh, uh, I'm not going to de uh, describe to you what is the dual. Well, it's something, I mean, it's describing our paper and uh, the rule is also trivial. Okay, but then from here, you can see that is under this spirit of our conjecture, you can actually see that then I should look forward for a comparison between the period here and the Kuznets of SL2, right? Because in this case, the dual is SL2. Okay, so and then the theorem is we can actually, we prove the fundamental lemma and the smooth transfer of this. So the fundamental, and I mean this, the proof here is actually not that bad. It's rank one, so you can do it. Fundamental lemma and the transfer. Oh. For all these cases. Okay, so in other words, like this is the, so the key is basically the more that's like we know that our RBF comparison here 
was motivated by these two conjecture about the periods. But vice versa, if you have this comparison, at least this gives you some evidence of this kind of why this period should be equal. So this is, uh, these two are like called closely related to each other. And so in other words, also for all these cases, the Iona health plan did not describe this conjecture also serve as evidence for, I mean, not just the BZSV and also our conjecture about the unicorn orbit. Okay, but in all these cases, actually, uh, this one is actually even. So, so you don't have this. Okay, uh, okay, so that's all. Thank you very much. It's a little confused with your uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, delta, so the yeah. easiest to be quadruple. Yeah. When you have P of Enota prime, what is Maybe I missed some problem. Oh, you know, here, you, whenever you have a hat, you, you, you can do duality back. So, so in other words, it's actually using the, the dual set. The dual yeah, because you see, the philosophy is the original, this dual set tells you how large can you represent here be because this is your SSO2. <laughs> and then this tells you, like, if, you're, like, if this is non trivial you cannot take the Wittaga coefficient because your, the unipotent the co uh, period you can take should be determined by is uh, uh, other parameter. So in other words, you take this dual back. Okay, so this so is the largest. So, so there is a duality between the new and the public organ. So you use, you use, uh, yeah. you use, uh, okay, you use a half prime. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Unfortunately, some might have some kind of double. I mean, yes. I, you also require. So you require a g prime u half to be the same as g half. Uh, oh, this is always true. This is always true. I mean, so, in terms of duality. The first coordinate is always the dual. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, it's so always true. Yes, it's only, only the second. So in other words, the assumption is really first, there is no central value for this period. And also the corresponding to the other two does not provide me with the, like the, 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 the all the way to space. For example, this is always true if this <laughs> is a even orbit. So, but there are also some examples we can, you, know, you can do this for the odd orbit. But uh, when this is zero, so the example I think is uh, you have g or n, g or n minus one, and the one zero something like. That. Then this is another. In this case, you can see that when you, I mean zero one, a uh, zero one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So in this case, it's like also g or n, but this is like g or two. You have some iota, and you have uh, also zero, some iota prime at. So then in this case, you can find that if you decompose this as a GL2 times iota head prime, the order space may be SL2. The order weighted space is actually two copies of standard. But you don't need it because one way the PL2 copies, you don't put it in the numerator. So this representation here only detects those symplectic representation of PL all the times. It's only those you put on the numerator. But, uh, I'm also a bit confused because uh, rather than duality, if you get I you have had prime and you go back, you don't get necessary. No, you don't get it. Yes, you are not related. No, these are not the same. Uh, so the recipe yeah. is uh, these are not the same one. one. So this is why I have to put a prime. So this is why I have to put a prime because if I add, if I don't put a prime, it will mean these two are dual to each other, but they are not. <laughs> and the same thing, these two are not dual to each other. H prime. H had prime and H, they are not really like you can no. say examples here, like, they have no relations. Yeah. But, but you have a way to start from there and determine. Yeah, yeah, this is a business with work. They can compute this to it. In other words, quadruple you start with uh, also produce a uh, unipotent orbit in the dual. Uh, yes, in general, like if like this appears if your packet, if your original thing is not tempered. If it's a tempered, then there's no such thing. So you just guess. Ah, I should also mention, so uh, for this theorem, so originally for this one, uh, the first, these three, it was uh, the fundamental level of the proof in an early paper of uh, Mao and the Rallis. So the, the, the motivation for this is, uh, you see, oh, in this case, this we all compare with SL2. The motivation for this is to use the relative trace formula method to uh, realize the, uh, Exceptional theta correspondence. So oh, you know, all these are pure. So, so yes, but uh, but then but if you put it, I mean that different motive, but you it seems it seems that so the all the work started with once 
Multiple means they have comparison it fits perfectly in this framework of BZS3. So in all these stations, the orbit space is one. Yeah, one dimension. The, 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 the proof of this is actually not that, that hard. So uh, the harder part is actually for this one because the, in the Fourier Jacobi coefficient, so when you unfold the orbit, it takes a while. For these three, they already can classify the orbit in their paper using this Jordan algebra since. So very uh, the question your the, your conjecture that you formulated yes. is there a way to interpret it as as saying saying I don't know giving some information about the dual I mean you you have a SL two triple you build yeah. a Hamiltonian space out of it yes yes are you giving some information about what kind of the dual period that that is yeah, look, uh, no excellent question but uh, so the issue here is so what happened I started with like a thing on the dual. Like then I this produce me with this iota, right? So then I take the theory. So and but I only I cannot I, I don't know what in general one way the theory be what non one issue for any kind of function. I only study the more like a specific type of assets or two. And the reason is like for example, I can start with very large, I start with the regular one here. Then this becomes the, the trivial near for the orbit. You just evaluate. So it is non vanishing for any represent. But I think it's only for this type of parameter you get a finite matrix. Because in general, you can the home space can be very large. So and this always this, I mean, in my point of view, this always relates to this so called theory of all spherical variety, which is you don't just consider spherical variety for Borel, but you consider for any near for the orbit. I think this is where you get the finite matrix. But I, I think in general, the duality. Usually tells you like when will it be non-zero, but does not like does not tell you what like what when will it be finite. Right. Just like if you consider the naive example when G is just G and the H is the trivial, then in this case the dual group I'm sure is G hat. But in the I mean the dual group of this pair is G hat, but of course it's not spherical. But if you want to get something with finite matrix, you want to get finiteness, you must have your answer for a bit of this form. So, yes. And maybe along the same line, is there, can you formulate a local version of your conjecture? Is there some, some, some uh, this is the question. But, uh, yes. Uh, I think local, this is about the wave form set of this packet. And uh, I'm sure Dima knows more than I do. So, so yes. I think this is kind of motivated by the local thing, like which is like you have a certain answer parameter, what are the wave form set? I think uh, at this conjecture, I know. I may be interpreted it wrong, but it's, uh, you take the dual, dual of this assets or two that the near potent orbit is supposed to be the wave function. Well, further questions, let's thank Chen again for Thank you.